says the high and lofty one. Who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him who has a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble. And to revive the hearts of the contrite ones. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which he ought to have done, and we have done those things which he ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and genuinely believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beg him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is taken from the ninth chapter of Judges, beginning at the first verse. Now Abimelech, the son of Jerobbaal, went to Shechem, to his mother's relatives, and said to them, and to the whole clan of his mother's family, Stay in the ears of all the leaders of Shechem. Which is better for you, that all seventy of the sons of Jerubbaal rule over you, or that one rule over you? Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's relative spoke all these words on his behalf, in the ears of the leaders of Shechem, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech. For they said, He is our brother. And they gave him seventy pieces of silver out of the house of baal Barith, which, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless fellows who followed him. And he went to his father's house at Ophrah and killed his brothers, the sons of Jerubbaal, seventy men on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbaal, was left, for he hid himself. And all the leaders of Shechem came together, and all Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king by the oak of the pillar at Shechem. When it was told to Jotham, he went and stood on the top of Mount Gerizim, and cried aloud and said to them, Listen to me, you leaders of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went out to anoint a king over them, and they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Shall I leave my abundance by which gods and men are honored, and go hold sway over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Shall I leave my sweetness and my good fruit, and go hold sway over the trees? And the tree said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I leave my wine that cheers God and men and go hold sway 
over the trees. Then all the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointing me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if you acted in good faith and integrity when you made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Jerubbaal and the house and have done to him as his deeds deserved, for my father fought for you and risked his life and delivered you from the hand of Midian. And you have risen up against my father's house this day, and have killed his sons, seventy men on one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his female servant, king over the leaders of Shechem, because he is your relative. If you then have acted in good faith and integrity with Jerubbaal, and with all his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech, and devour the leaders of Shechem and Beth Milo. And let fire come out from the leaders of Shechem and from Beth Milo, and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled, and went to Beer and to live there because of Abimelech his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is taken from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning at the 29th verse. When the crowds were increasing, he began to say, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. No one after lighting a lamp puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand, so that those who enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, oh, Lord, 
Let us now recite our profession of faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that you being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O eternal God, our Heavenly Father, who alone makes men to be of one mind in a house and stills the outrage of a violent and unruly people, we bless your holy name and ask that it would please you to appease the seditious tumults which have been lately raised up amongst us, most humbly begging you to grant us grace that we may obediently walk in your holy commandments, lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, and continually offer unto you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving for these your mercies toward us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O most mighty and merciful God, to whom alone belong the issues of life and death, in this time of grievous sickness we flee unto you for relief. Deliver us, we beg you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to your ministers of healing. Bless the means of cure, and grant that, perceiving how frail is our earthly life, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, the high and mighty ruler of the universe, who does from your throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily, we beg you, with your favor, to behold and bless your servant, Donald Trump, our president, our Senate and representatives in Congress assembled, Philip Murphy, the governor of New Jersey, Tom Wolfe, the governor of Pennsylvania, and all others in authority. And so replenish them with the grace of your Holy Spirit, that they may always incline to your will and walk in your way. Empower them plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant them in health and prosperity long to live. And finally, after this life, to attain everlasting joy and happiness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the strong tower and refuge of your people, we entreat your favor upon the officers and all who are enlisted in the service of defense of our country. Ever spare them from being ordered into a war of aggression or oppression. Use them, if need be, as your instruments in the defense of our national life and liberty. By restraining, we beg you, the greed and wrath of man, that wars may cease in all the earth. Watch over also all policemen and law enforcement officers everywhere, 
especially Tim Richvalski, protect them from harm in the performance of their duty. We pray also for firefighters, first responders, and healthcare workers who protect us and ours from all types of danger. Give these men and women the courage and skills to carry out their duties well and safely. When they must go into the face of danger, be by their side. Watch over their families, reminding them that those who go into danger are in your loving care. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops, especially Foley, Ray, and Chuck, and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may truly please you, pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beg you for all sorts and conditions of men, that you would be pleased to make your ways known unto them, your saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for your holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. For Willie Miley, now home from the hospital, but still in need of healing and of prayer, we pray, Lord, especially for the diabetes, that it will be something that can be temporary and treatable. We pray for Dolores Mitchell, Mary Hudson, Gina Martinez, our friends and family who have businesses that have been so affected by the coronavirus, especially Heather and Al, Larry, Mark, Roy, and Bill. For Rachel, Dominic, Heather and Grace, Ariel and Oliver. For Noah, Jonathan, Brian, Sydney, and Nick. And for Lynn Blitz, who is now home and still recovering and feeling even better than in the rehab center. We pray for all those who have been so greatly affected by the coronavirus, especially Marie Young West, for Emily and Rob Marble, nurses who have been taking care of corona patients who now have contracted the virus, for Bill and Kim Jenkins, for the family of Ron Burdick, our brother who passed away last week, for Jean, Ted and Midge, for Audrey, the granddaughter of Bishop Cox, and for Father Ted Rothrock. That it may please you to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that our hearts may be truly thankful and that we may declare your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through jesus christ our lord to whom with you and the holy spirit be all honor and glory world without end amen almighty god you have promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in your son's name Mercifully accept us who have now made our prayers and petitions to you, and grant us those things which we have asked in faith, according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The, the grace, grace of, of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God, and, and the, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and in knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. As we consider, usually at this time, I would remind you to support your local parish. Um, when possible, you can do that now by going to church. St. John's Church is now open for 8.30 and 10 o'clock services every Sunday, and you are welcome to attend. We do have certain restrictions up for the safety of everyone, including wearing a mask and keeping social distance. And we have the church interior set up to assist with that. But we certainly would welcome you to come and attend. If you are not able to attend and would like to support our ministry anyway, you may check out below our link to our church website, which has information on how you can support it. Or, of course, as always, you can write a check and mail it to the church. Also, while you're checking out below, please, if you are not subscribed already, please subscribe to St. John's by the Sea and click on the bell icon after you subscribe. Also feel free to like the videos. That's always a nice thing and it helps the videos to get promoted through YouTube. Thank you for visiting St. John's by the Sea Church. Did you get that one? Yeah. Thank you for visiting St. John's by the Sea Church. This is... <laughs> This is Nolan Carter saying, what's that called? Thank you for visiting St. John Fisey Church. This is Carter and not Noah, only Carter. This is Carter and Noah. Thank you for visiting St. John's. Hi. Thank you for visiting St. John's. Bye, Jesus.